We're going to be late. We're not going to make it. No, I told you we should have left earlier. Well, I had to make the sandwiches, didn't I? Cucumber and Marmite. Ugh, I hate cucumber and Marmite. Well, it's all right, because I forgot them anyway. Oh, that's all right then. No, it is, and that's why we're late. Look, will you not stop bickering? We're not bickering. You are bickering. We're not. Well, it sounds like bickering. Well, it's not. It's niggling. <laughs> will you just stop it and fly the helicopter, please? I'm not flying it. Flo is. Well, I'm not. You are, aren't you? No. Well, who is then? The pilot who came with it. Oh, oh that's right. Reg. Hello, Reg. Oh, look. Down there. Oh, yeah. What is it? Isn't it smooth? Yeah. But what is it? It's so tiny. Yeah, I know that. What is it? It's minute. What is it, Flo? I don't know. It's too small to tell. <laughs> 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 ah, I spy, with my little eye, something beginning with A-F-I-T-P-S-E. Ah, that's easy. Oh, yeah. What is it, then? A fire in the portside engine. Oh. That's right. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. I'm only joking. Oh, oh, look down there. Look, it's a man putting in double glazing. <laughs> Take it down, Reg. Uh, Oh. Ah. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Moult. Oh, I wouldn't like to be driving down there. Why not? It's the Thames. <laughs> ants. What? They look just like ants. Oh, yeah. What? Down there. People look just like ants. No, not down there. Down there. Look. Ants. <laughs> Make me go all shivery. They're funny though, aren't they? Ants. <laughs> Name me one top comedian who's an ant. <laughs> ants, 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 ants. I detest small talk. <laughs> oh, great! Television centre. Oh, oh, I go for that. Phew. Take her down, Reg. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're oh, down. Careful. I felt a bit sick. Oh, 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 oh dear. Oh. Oh. Thanks, Reg. My stomach's still up there. Is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, dear. Dear, dear. oh, no, I didn't bring my movie. You're right. Don't fuss, Joe. Oh, please. I'm not fussing. I just want my hat. Where's my hat? Stop it. I can't get my seatbelt off. Well, come on, Joe. Oh, Joe, you're pulling the wrong seat. That's, it. That's, it. That's, That's better. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, look. The whole audience wants on. Come on. Hurry up. Come on. 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 Mind it, mind oh, 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 I'm not scared of that. Come on, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Always. Yes, and we've got some great moments in this week's show. Lots of jokes, lots of sketches. Yep. Lots of bowing. Yes, lots of bowing. <laughs> yes, we've got the uh, rugby scrum sketch. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> got bad back sketch. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> braces are too tight sketch. Whoa. <laughs> oh, and the sooner the helicopter takes off and we can stand up again, the better. And now, this. this. Ah! Ah! Mm -hmm. Ah! Oh! Mm -hmm. Saw my doctor yesterday. Said I was unhealthy and overweight. Said I'd have to cut down to one bag of chips a week. What did you say to that? I said, Doctor, if you say one bag, then one bag it is. One <laughs> well, 
Well, Mr. Knowles, I've just about completed my annual checkup of your zoo animals, and I must say, they are the unhealthiest, thickest, most useless collection that's ever been my misfortune to examine. What do you mean, useless? I mean, Mr. Knowles, that not one of them is fit to do any of the things they're supposed to do. Oh. I wouldn't say that. Wouldn't you? Well, I would. For example, you have a sea lion. Sammy. Who is afraid of the water. He has to wear armbands before he'll go near the pool. Your antelope won't jump. It just lies there like a slug with horns. You have a giraffe, which is the shortest animal in the zoo. And what about the elephant? He forgets things. Doesn't he know an elephant never forgets? Yeah, of course he knows. It just slipped his mind, that's all. And the polar bear, how many times he had the flu? No, 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 that's not his fault. He feels the cold, something terrible. It's his chest. And the lion? There's nothing wrong with our Lenny. He's a lovely animal. But he's a vegetarian. And that's not all. You have a parrot with a stutter, a silent rattlesnake. Even the ants in the picnic area are completely bone idle. And what about the dove of peace? What about it? It attacks people. Friendly pecs. <laughs> Look, what I'm trying to tell you, Mr. Knowles, is that none of your animals can fulfil its proper function. They don't. Well, they just don't, do they? Very sorry about this, Mr. Knowles, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to close you down. Oh, oh no, don't do that. Look, I have got one animal that performs perfectly. Look, there. Arthur. And what is Arthur? A skunk. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh! Hello and welcome. In the studio today, we will be discussing a new and startling theory that people's behaviour is affected by their names. Our three experts who have been researching this new and fascinating theory are Miss Dawn Fidget. Hello. Professor Rodney Evercross. Hello. And Mrs. Emma Giggle Hamilton. Hello. <laughs> now then, have any of you managed to discover whether indeed people's behaviour is affected by their names? Um, Mrs. Giggle Hamilton. I couldn't find out anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, Miss Fidget. Well, I found out that while women never act like their own names, men always do. Interesting. Professor Evercross. What absolute rubbish. Mm -hmm. I've never heard such a load of nonsense in all my life. And if you think I'm going to sit here and listen to a load of fiddle-faddle nonsense like that, then you, sir, are very much mistaken. <laughs> And stop giggling, Mrs. Gill, Will you stop fidgeting, Miss Fidget? Oh, don't keep shouting, Professor uh, Evercross. Don't, 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 don't tell me to stop shouting. Professor, please, oh. you will have a turn in just a minute. I hope so. Now then, Mrs. Giggle Hamilton, you say that you couldn't find out whether people did act like their names. No. But didn't you interview a Mr. Arthur Whisper? Yes, but I couldn't hear him. <laughs> And a Mrs. Agnes answer phone? Yes, but she was out. But if I left my name and number, she'd phone me back after the beep. <laughs> and what about Mr. Roger Camouflage? I couldn't see him at all. <laughs> Fine. Now then, Miss Fidget, what, what do you have to say about this subject? Well, I spoke to a Mr. Arthur Parrot who kept repeating everything I said. <laughs> And then there was a Mr. Cyril Ball who kept bouncing around all over the place. I just don't believe it. And then finally, I spoke to Mr. Peter 49 Bus, who kept me waiting for ages. And when he did turn up, there were three of him. <laughs> I've never heard anything so ridiculous in all my yes, life. Yes, one moment, Professor, please. But didn't you find that women acted like their own names as well, Miss Fidget? Oh, no. We never act like our own names, do we, Mrs. Giggle Hamilton? No, Miss Fidget. <laughs> but, uh, Professor Evercross. I've told you once, I'm not going to tell you again, it's all absolute rubbish. How any intelligent person can really honestly believe that any man acts like his own name is quite beyond me. There's not a shred of evidence for it, as sure as my name's Rodney Evercross. <laughs> and do stop giggling, Mrs. Giggle Hamilton. Oh, don't keep shouting, Professor Evercross. I'm shouting if you uh, stop giggling. Uh, don't, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> Professor, please. I'm really? afraid we'll have to stop it there. About time to. Oh, thank you. Um, that's all we have time for this week. Good. 
<laughs> Next week, we will be discussing a new and startling theory which states that people's behaviour is influenced by the behaviour of others. Is that not so, Professor Evercross? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Um, Giggle Hamilton? Oh, absolutely, Julian. Yes, I couldn't agree more. And Miss Bridget? If you say so, good night! <laughs> Until next week, this is Julian Slapstick saying... <laughs> no, bye bye everybody. And now, another great moment in history where we. There's supposed to be music over this bit. Oh, yes. And now, another... Not that sort. This is a serious moment. Sorry. <laughs> right. Thank you. Another great moment in history. Lord Nelson lies mortally wounded on the deck of his ship, the Victory. We join him as he is about to utter his famous last words. I'm, I'm, I'm dying. Ah, no, no, quick, lad. Tell me, what's your name? Me mates call me Belly Button, sir. Oh, no, 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 you won't do it at all, then. Uh, are you, lad, you? Tell me, what's your name? Bottom, sir. <laughs> oh, grief, that's even worse. Ah, you, tell me, what's your name? Hardy, sir. Ah, at last. Kiss me, Hardy. <laughs> I looked around the dark and empty store. They told me it was here. They wouldn't do the job themselves, but somebody had to do the job, and that somebody was me. It was bitterly cold. I could hear my teeth chattering. <laughs> and a wild winter wind moaning. <laughs> the trees outside. Slowly, I put out my arm. I felt a pain. Ah. <laughs> then another pain. Ah. I had no idea there were so many windows in the place. <laughs> Carefully. I took some steps forward. Then I took the steps and put them up against the back of the wall. <laughs> it was then, then that I saw the body. Lying over the back of the chair, the head flung back, the left leg horribly twisted. My own horror at this spectacle was echoed by the terrible wind. <laughs> in the inside. Suddenly, I froze in my tracks. Peering down on my overcoat, I could see the telltale signs of a thick, dark, red stain. Why, I should never have had that tomato ketchup on my bacon and eggs. <laughs> and now my pulse was racing. I struggled with the... As I... As I struggled with the body, I could hear the windows rattling in the wind. <clears throat> a feverish tremor shot right through me. My quickening steps rang out. On the concrete floor. Soon, though, this awful job would be done, and the boss could have the body. Oh, Blenkinsop, good. You bought the new dummy. Could you put it down next to Miss Autumn Fashions, please? Just here, is it? Oh, dear. A little bit knocked about, isn't she? Oh, look at that sign. It says, Tipsy Fortune Teller. They must mean gypsy, mustn't they? Yes, sir. I know what I mean. <laughs> Master St. Osbert's, I have to tell you about your standard of appearance. We all appreciate that this is the 1980s, but just look at you, Prescott. For example, the earring, torn jeans, the safety pins, paint spray, the chains. I mean, Prescott, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> What have you got to say for yourself, eh? Uh, I'm the singing burgergram. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, hello, 
Bernie. It is Bernie, isn't it? Long time, nice to see. Oh, How are you keeping? Oh, not too bad, I suppose. Uh -huh. Oh, this is my friend Julie. It's Julie, Bernie, Bernie, Julie. <laughs> oh, hello. Is something wrong with your neck? Ah, you noticed. Yes, I think I might have slept in a draught last week because it's been like this ever since. Oh. Well, Julie could fix that for you. Yeah. She's trained to do that sort of thing. Hey, you look at that hand, you see? That was covered in boils. And she got rid of them? Yeah, they're all on that hand now. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make me laugh. No, really. No, but seriously, if Julie rubbed your neck, she would cure that for you. All right. If you don't mind, Julie. Of course not. You might. You might. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 that's amazing. It feels so different. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Can you bawdy anyone? <laughs> <laughs>